Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Brent. I'm the host for Canadians with Disabilities and their Allies. And uh, today I have Carl Witterquist calling in. Actually, uh, he's call using calling in uh, using FaceTime, and uh, so I'm going to be broadcasting him onto the show. You'll be talking about UBI, and this is a very, very important uh, discussion that we'll be having today. So anyone actually tuning in to the podcast later will find this very informative. Good afternoon, Carl. Hi. Hi, thanks for coming on. This is a great pleasure to have you on today. So how, I guess the first question I have for you is, how did you become involved with UBI? Like, um, what kind of perked your interest uh, with the UBI? Well, I don't know if it's something I should be proud of or embarrassed of. I've been interested in UBI since the 20th century. As a matter of fact, since way back on my 15th birthday, on February 7th of 1980, uh, when uh, Milton Friedman's television show, uh, Free to Choose, had an entire episode on a guaranteed income. But I've been a supporter of some form of income guarantee or another since then. I now do believe UBI is the better model, but uh, you know, I can say, okay, I've been doing this for 40 years, but well, it was actually Milton Friedman who talked me into it. Oh, wow. I recognize his name. Uh, very, very uh, interesting uh, uh, individual for sure. He's uh, quite knowledgeable for sure. Yeah, he's, he's very knowledgeable, but he's also uh, a very, well, he's a very libertarian, classical liberal economist who mm -hmm. uh, is always trying to cut government spending. Everything that happens is the government's fault. Very kind of simplistic ideology. If there's a problem in the market, just look at whatever this government is doing and blame everything on that. But he had... Um, his idea for poverty was to get rid of this really complex system of income support we have and replace it with something that is simple and comprehensive, doesn't ask a lot of questions, and makes sure that everybody who doesn't add income has income. So there's a floor under which nobody's income is going to fall. And I began to see that as a challenge to both left and right. If you want to help people, why do you want to regiment it? Why you got to say, prove this, prove that, prove the other thing? If you really want to help people, you help them unconditionally. And uh, that's really been the heart of why I support basic income. I don't necessarily think you've got to get rid of everything else the way Milton Friedman was talking about. Mm -hmm. But I do think we need this basic support for everybody. Yeah, exactly. Because um, in Canada, um, they have a lot of programs in place right now. Like we have the uh, programs in place for persons with disabilities in each province. Well, I shouldn't say every province. I mean, some eastern provinces do not have a designation for them. However, um, the ones that the provinces that do have it in place, you have to jump through all these little hoops to uh, basically prove. The reason why that you are still eligible for income, and in my view, I you, nobody should have to prove why you need income. <laughs> People need income in order to put the money back into the economy, right? And it, it blossoms from there. And with the UBI or a basic income, that would actually accomplish that. And I, I agree with you that you know not to maybe abolish every single thing because like a lot of. Um, uh, health supports that need to be uh, kind of stay in, intact, right, to help people. Uh, unless, you know, the basic income was going to be high enough where it's going to uh, accomplish that, but a base amount is needed for sure to keep that structure in place where people will benefit from it. I mean, I, I guess in my view, um, I mean, you could elaborate on it. In my view, what people should be able to kind of move around to where they need to based on economics like for housing accessibility wise freely move within their country or anywhere around the world and still have that basic amount yeah i think people people who are opposed basic income will often try to get disabled people on their side by saying well these are the truly needy we need to have less of this basic income for everybody so we can afford to have more just for the who have proven disabilities. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some there's some logic in, the, in that. People, you know, I would never propose that you have a basic income and then quadriplegic or paraplegics have to buy their own wheelchair out of their basic income. Mm -hmm. And blind people have to buy a leader dog or whatever they have out of their basic income. People with special needs should get more. But everybody needs food, shelter, clothing, transportation, and a little bit more for cushion. 
no matter what your other are. And the reason that I think disabled people shouldn't fall for this rhetoric of oh you're the good you're the good needy people you should you should be against base income and then we'll have more for you is they seldom deliver on this. Very often you've got people who are who want a really stingy welfare state, it ends up getting really stingy for everybody. So that's one reason. Another reason disabled people I think should be for it is that it's too hard to have to prove it and prove it over again. You find a lot of people who qualify Mm -hmm. for programs will be treated like criminals for uh, just for applying. Oh, if you're eligible for government aid, you must this must be you must be doing something wrong. And so they will treat people like criminals. You prove it. You got this. You prove that. You prove the other thing. Less of this. Once we get this little base that jumping through hoops to get a little more, it's easier to do. It's easier to do to prove, okay, now I've got my base of income and I can prove, okay, I need a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have a little bit of money and support to do that. It's easier to prove stuff. But also, once we get to this concept, that, yes, we care about everybody's, everybody's needs, mm-hmm. whether they're special needs or not, you're likely to have a much more generous welfare system together. we got to get around that, that, that our country, our country cares enough about everybody to make sure their basic needs are met. And then if we want you to work or something, we're gonna, we're gonna offer you even more. We're gonna offer you handsome rewards. And we're gonna let you turn those rewards down if we haven't given you enough. If you get that sort of mentality, we're gonna be a lot, it's gonna be better for able and disabled alike. Another reason, this isn't gonna be true for all disabled people, mm-hmm. uh, but it's gonna be true for a lot of disabled people. A lot of people have intermittent or invisible invisible disabilities mm-hmm. that are hard to prove. Some people have something, if you have, say, de- depression that comes and goes, or you have a, a severe case of, of, of diabetes that is sometimes is disability, disabling and sometimes isn't, whenever you f- you are in a good phase where you can get out and work, you've just proved you're not disabled, and then you got to go and prove it again. Or you have something, some, and, and in the United States, I, it's, maybe it's a little better in Canada, but in the United States, the process of proving you're disabled to be eligible for Social Security disability is so arduous that actually middle class people are more likely to get it than low income people. It's so hard to prove mm. that people often have to save money and wait for, for years to get it to come through. And you've got to get uh, a friend of mine had a mental disability. My brother had to drive him over an hour from our house to go to some appointment to prove and the guy when you talk to him the guy's he's you can tell there's you can tell there's some problems with this guy and he needs help it's really pretty simple but it took years to prove and his family had money he eventually got it it took years he got it but without his family money he wouldn't got it i have other people with intermittent depression that i know who don't have that family support and, and 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 so are actually more needy than he is but are unable to prove it and don't get anything. We had a basic income. They might not, that depressed person might not get the extra support they need, but they have some support. They have enough for food, shelter, and clothing, and and, and some transportation and a cushion. That makes a huge difference. There's so many inequalities for sure in the systems that are designed, and these systems were designed way back. Some, Some people say way back in the 1800s, 1900s. They're so archaic that yeah, they're designed to keep people in poverty, <clears throat> right? And nobody should be in poverty anywhere in the world, really. There should always be uh, income distribution to make sure people have their basic needs met. And then a lot more, right? I exactly, I, I totally echo everything that you say, uh, Carl, on that. Um, it's so important that that, that society it takes care of everybody, not just the, the well-to-do, the few that... Uh, you know the top one or they, what they call them say the top one or two percent, right? I think everybody should be taken care of in one way or another, um, and like you shouldn't have to basically prove the reason why that you need money. And yes, the systems do treat people like criminals, right? It, it was like, oh well, why why do you need this? Why do you need extra supports? Why do you need money? What are you? Why do you need to uh, have a food uh, allowance or um, oh, you need clothing, well, why? Um, where are you going to shop? You know, I mean, like, you have to explain yourself to why you need all these things, but 
why why do people need to explain why they need money? Yeah, and I mean the reason we need money is because <laughs> all the natural resources are owned by somebody. Yeah. Before before uh, Europeans came here and settled, there were a few state societies scattered around that might have been oppressive as oppressive as our states were. But a lot of Native Americans could hunt, gather, fish, and farm mm-hmm. as they wished. And and uh, a lot of them will say, a lot of them will say that they were not poor. They didn't have. Uh, they didn't have the wealth that we have, but they uh, the the, uh, the opportunities for wealth that we have. But they also didn't have the opportunities for abject poverty that we do. If you've got uh, if you got a trout stream you can fish in, you've got a place you can plant crops, you can build your own shelter, you can hunt and gather fish and farm. Uh, you are not poor. But now, if you want to make a life for yourself, you can't. That's illegal. The only way to make your life is to go and, and off, go to somebody who owns the, the natural resources that used to be in common for everyone. You gotta go to them and work for them and say, please, sir, may I be your servant? And it shouldn't have to be that way. The, the people who own the natural resources should be compensating those who don't and say, okay, if we're gonna own this property, that means we're gonna generate some income on it. We're gonna share that generation, that income with everybody so nobody's poor, and then if we want you to work, we'll offer you more on top of that. That's the way it should work. There, there was an article that was just um, recently, I believe it was through CTV News. I, I saw it floating around a lot of them on the on the call today here on the channel. Uh, we've all seen it, um, I'm sure, where there was a veteran. He served in the he served uh, in the war. He's got PTSD, and he's got other uh, chronic, uh, you know. Um, Illnesses, you know, re- related, and injuries related to uh, to uh, you know the battles uh, that he went through to get what we have today, right? And so, as society, I mean, we should be, you know, I, I would think we should be, you know, respecting, you know, the elders, the veterans who have fought for what we have today, and instead, uh, he's in the hospital. Uh, he just wants home care. He just wants to be uh, given the right to um, to live at home, would have the care. And so he's been offered bait instead of uh, suggesting to him that, oh, well, we, you know, well, you're suffering. Um, you're costing us, from what the news article said, well, you're costing us $1,500 a day to, to be in the hospital. He says, right, well, if you can just give me the support to live at home uh, with the, the proper home care, that's what I want. And they're like, but we are mm-hmm. offering you to end your life. Well, that's wrong. Like, that's what I mean. Like, uh, when people, they just want to live healthy, but when they're living in poverty or they're a veteran and they're suffering, well, okay, so the veteran's suffering, make their life as comfortable as they can, you know, um, because of their situation. But when a person's living in poverty, well, how did they get there? How do we, how do we lift them out of poverty, eliminate yeah. poverty? You give them the financial resources so they don't put a strain on the health care system so they can better their health. What's your view? Yeah, on that? I think economists have the idea of what the economic problem is. Mm-hmm. Oh, Al- the economic problem they say is the allocation of resource of scarce resources toward unlimited wants, and which of these limited wants we can satisfy, and how are them. That is the wrong way to look at the economic problem. Mm-hmm. The economic problem is how to meet everyone's basic needs including their medical needs and, and, and freedom for as much suffering as possible. How to meet everyone's basic needs. And then to use what's left over to, to try to satisfy our wants without destroying the environment that sustains it. It should be you know, basic income, housing, medical care, and these kind of things first. We get all that done and we're going to have plenty left over to satisfy people's wants and to stop killing the environment that sustains it. We can do it. All we have to do is get our, stop this us and them thinking mm-hmm. and get our priorities straight. 